So, recently, I saw an interesting thing about how many animals can breathe through butts. Many amphibians, reptiles, and to some extent, very few mammals. And they do, and some fish, and they do this because your butt leads to your rest of your body, and there's a lot of blood vessels to absorb stuff or get out, excrete stuff nearby. Now, most mammals cannot really do this, and not to a large extent. But they forced it into mice by um, not a present procedure. And um, they put starved mice of oxygen, and another one they put up a tube up the butt and forced little quantities of oxygen up the butt into intestines. And then they said that this might be better than um, breathing food into a basin where they put a tube down your throat and into your lungs because it doesn't block off those cavities as much, it doesn't cause as much of inflammation that's going to be damaging. It also, if you put in too much air pressure into your lungs, you can actually start making tears and rips in your lungs, which can cause long-term damage to your lungs. Um, and it can also negatively affect the muscles of the lungs, breathing it, and if you put out air too fast, you also can cause rips and tears in the lungs. And it's also can, the promoting it also builds mucus build up and more. It, the less you need to do it, the better. And the not beyond that, if you can do a less extreme where you, it's only much more of a support thing, like a, then it also would be less damaging because you're pushing air less forcefully in and out. You could even get rid of maybe the t- full size tube to, to let less inflammation was intubation is very painful and requires a lot of anesthetics. The alternative also is if you could get rid of intubation, maybe if this could just help a little bit, you could also not, f- if you're not fully getting rid of intubation or possibly, you might be able just to use like a breathing mask that gives positive pressure that helps people breathe or gives a little more oxygen that needs breath. But giving people more oxygen does have its own problems. So you have that advances in theory, and maybe the procedure could be done eventually so it's not too painful and the person could stay conscious more. However, I see some major challenges with this technology. One is that you block off people's ability to poop as well. It also might irritate, be very irritating for people down under. I don't know how much compared to breathing. I would think less because there's a lot more movement there of different things. But the asked honest question also, it might be much more dirty for people. So there might be more risk of contamination with like poop and stuff with healthcare workers. I think it would be actually less dirty with not on the poop side, but for the person getting it because they're not getting something down the throat where they have a higher risk of infection. Another thing that I think, but another thing I think that could be pros is maybe you could feed them like IV liquids or other liquids without the entire digestive tract more. And that could have some major, major health benefits because you don't have to put in a needle maybe, another needle for an IV. when you absorb some along your whole track, digestive tract, it's a lot slower absorption, which means it's less suddenly impacts you and causes your body less stress. And when they've sown that with chemicals, it causes you to re- help reduce fever and just gives your body more energy to help set its immune system because you're not putting energy into that. So it could help, it can help lower inflammation. You can deliver maybe more drugs through this method directly by skipping the stomach and over a longer length where they absorb more quickly. You might be able to monitor certain body fluids better throughout the system. But I also just don't know how much it's going to inflame the intestines because intestines are not used to getting oxygen or nitrogen. Maybe you can lower the pressure and just um, bubble in pure oxygen, but a lower pressure and less forceful to exchange it. Maybe, but how well does that work? How much tube do you need? Nitrogen might make harmful bubbles, but might not. Maybe you can make the tube that it goes in and it expands inside the intestine and spirals out so there's more surface area. So it gives off the oxygen in a more 
over longer distance more fairly. And you could have an expanse that touches more the side walls. So it can touch the side walls in various places more, giving it a more gentle flow out there over longer area. But then you would have to design special materials that change shapes and sizes in the body, which I do not know how easy it is. Is it possible at all or anything about it? Except for maybe, but I think it will need a lot more development and a lot more practice in people. Also, maybe if you feed people more artificially through these tubes, maybe you need to poop out a lot less. And if you have to poop still, would we need to like a stomata or some bad to collect the poop? How much can you reduce poop by IV drips? I don't know. It might be very different in different cases. Also, how much more training do you need people for to figure out this new system? And all these other little nitpicky things. Well, thank you very much for listening. If you have any thoughts about this, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And again, if you have any ideas for future videos, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much again.